So here we have a Crown MA12000i. This is very similar in many respects to the Crown iTech series of amps. It's also similar to the Crown iTech HDs. Uh, it's also similar to some of the other range of Crown amps that use a similar I class I technology. Uh, but what I want to talk about here is looking at how we've, we service our own, well I, I service um, my company's amps and fix and repair them where necessary and in particular these amps are known to be complicated, difficult and dangerous to repair. So let's briefly talk about that and uh, how I approach doing these. So we've got about 11 of these amplifiers, 10 or 11, something like that. Um, and over the last few years, a couple of them have failed, and they, and they have a bit of a reputation for exploding. Certainly, the early early versions of the iTex do. Um, these range of amps, the MAI, are considered to be a lot better. But actually, they're very, very, very similar. Uh, a very quick overview of how these amps work. Uh, you've got power supply under this section here. Uh, this top, under this metal case here is your EMI filter, um, which looks very much like this. So this is just AC comes in through here, goes through a filter network, um, is presented to the amplifier via these terminals here, and on this side, uh, ignore the repair, there is a constant plus minus 20 volt power supply that does kind of the standby stuff. Um, it's on all the time, uh, as long as this breaker is on. This power supply is on all the time. So, um, I've just seen I've got a power supply to have, but I don't. So, underneath that is a power supply. Um, I have a power supply controller card. So, depending on what version of amplifier you have, th there are a few differences on these. Uh, and that really all the difference is, as far as we're concerned, is a different voltage on the capacitor banks that vary from about 180 volts plus minus um, to 200 volts plus minus. There was something around there. So, that is what makes these amps particularly dangerous. If this amp was powered on, being that this is an iTech, I don't know, it's not, it's a, a MAI. 12,000, um, between the red wire and the blue wire there's 400 volts DC, actually about 405 with this capacitor bank behind it. And uh, that's that's will kill you, there's no messing about there. If you somehow manage to touch across the terminals, and it is possible because they're present here, uh, you're in big trouble um, and you're not going to be around to tell that tale. So first rule. If you're working on one of these amps and you've had the thing powered up, discharge the capacitor banks before you touch anything. It's, I can't stress that enough. Um, depending where you are in the world, you know that's far, far more dangerous than touching any plug socket in your house or, or whatever. Okay, safety talk out of the way, uh, at least that's part of the first one. So input signals presented on the back, there's a bit of DSP going on here, uh, current monitoring and, and other stuff. Um, that then feeds onto the main board, they call that the main BCA or BCA main. Um, there's mostly just passive components on here, there's, there's not much going on. All the There's fan control but all the active stuff are on cards and this is a front end drive card. Um, this is what converts the incoming analog signal into a digital switch signal, which is there. There's one here. That other one's dead. I'm just waiting for another one. Sometimes, even I give up on trying to fix things. It's just not worth my time. So that then passes it straight through to here. These are the gate drivers. That is a gate driver. Uh, this is a gate driver from a. Uh, iTech 6000. Um, it's got a few removed components on there because I've been testing and borrowing stuff before I actually had all my components arrive. So this is a driver that drives eight IGBTs. There are eight per channel. There are two cards per channel, one there, one there. 
and um, if you have a blown IGBT, you're going to definitely have blown components on this. If you have blown, <laughs> a lot of the time, one channel will fail, and you'll be like, okay, let's swap these cards around and see what's going on. Um, if you have a blown one of these and you plug it into a good channel, you've now got two blown channels. You really have to be careful with these, and you have to check all the um, gate, tran uh, gate resistors, gate drive transistors. Um, you will find dead ones, open circuit and short circuit ones. So after the signal path leaves the gate driver card, you're then presented to the IGBTs, which are, that's another one I made earlier, here. So there's eight per channel, two diodes that sit in the middle. Um, you can see lots of these have been removed. This board is dead. Hello explosion, that happened halfway through a gig. Thanks very much. Um, now what usually happens is the uh, gate will either short to drain or source. That means you'll get full rail voltage on the gate. This is where it gets exciting. That full rail voltage will back feed into the driver card, fire the resistors on here and blow up all the other, all the other IGBTs as well. If you're really unlucky, when all this is going wrong, the reference voltage that is provided by the output stage, um, which is generated from, there's a Zener there, and there's a Zener there, there's a few diodes, um, that is fed back to the driver card, and that will result in also destruction of said driver card. Now, uh, unfortunately, I don't seem to have any dead ones to show, but one I did have, which was quite amusing because most of the 5 volt uh, logic ICs had decapped themselves, um, and that is actually, was that on this one? Mm. Yeah, I think it was, but I've taken them all off now. So, have a look at another one. Is that one? No. So, that's quite a big repair. Um, because if you, then if you repair the IGBTs and you replace them, and you've repaired the gate driver card, and you've not repaired the Zener diodes and the reference voltage, that feeds back to this card, you're just going to blow this up, which is probably going to pass back down the chain and blow everything else up again. So, what you really need to know exactly where you're going with this is an old school scope um, with component tester. By having this, you can actually do a visual check on the gates of all the components. Um, you can compare bad cards against good cards without having to put good cards in the place of bad cards and then making them bad. Um, and that really, by checking that and by checking all the gates on all the IGBTs and making sure they're not short to the output, uh, is how I've managed to now start getting decent repairs on these without accidentally blowing stuff up. So where does that leave us? Um, important, as I said earlier, if you're going to work on one of these amps, find a way to discharge the capacitor banks. Um, the way I do it is I've got probes that I poke into this here, and that connects to a mains 60 watt light bulb, and um, that drains it down in about 10 seconds. Then what you want to do is check all your IGBTs are good and proper. Um, so that would be checking for shorts between the gate, source and drain. Um, it's worth knowing also 
do not power up one of these amps without a gate card present. There are no uh, gate drive resistors on the IGBTs. The IGBT, IGBTs can float and that means you can power the thing up with no gate driver card in and they will be on. It doesn't take much at all and that will be instant explosion or if you're lucky just power supply shut down before it's fully charged. So how can you power these things up and do any checks at all if you can't power them up without gate driver card? Uh, well the easiest way is to unplug the inductors. So just by pulling off two wires there, two wires there, that breaks the circuit across the power supply if there is a short IGBT and you can then power them up without the gate driver cards and start taking measurements and if you've got one good channel working that's a, a way of um, kind of working on one channel without causing potential damage to the other one and so on. That's probably about it really so discharge past the bank don't power up the amp with the inductors connected without a gate driver card because that's just going to be trouble um, make sure all the IGBTs are open circuit and aren't short um, sometimes when you're trying to measure across them the kind of gate charge um, can be enough even if you've touched it with your test probe so that it actually turns the gate on and they look short when they're not um, and the way to deal with that is just to discharge the, the gate um, with a resistor or, or you know I normally can do it with the, just the um, probes and that works fine um, and so in the case of this amp this came to me with everything I've talked about one channel completely annihilated this channel quite upset and it someone had actually got to it before me so there was various components missing all over it really bizarre um, including some of the op amps at the front end before it even gets to the front end drivers I don't know why maybe when this one blew up it went all the way back and killed the op amps it's not impossible I suppose so this is a bit of um, a more technical video than normal for this our channel my channel this business uh, fusion event services if you like uh, uh, it's a quick summary of the iTech amps and the MAI series of amps I'm actually a massive fan of them now they are a serious power amplifier and uh, we use them now for all the big PA that we've got and being able to fix them in house is a, a massive bonus as far as we're concerned um, yeah so I think that's about it but we might come back to some of more of these and um, when, when I do another repair I might attempt to make a video whilst um, I'm doing so. Uh, this one is now working fine. Um, oh yeah, another thing, a bit fragmented this video. You can safely power up the amp without a front-end driver card in. That's fine. Um, and swapping one around isn't risky provided that you've done the basic checks on the gate driver card and also that the reference um, or supply rails generated here are okay. So I've rarely, I don't think I've broken a front end card. Um, I have damaged, in the process of learning how these all work, several gate driver cards, but fortunately I've managed to repair them. So there we go. The Crown MAI series. Um, the iTech is practically identical. Um, slightly revised and there's one other thing I'll talk about so in the early days of the I'm getting sidetracked but this is actually quite interesting I thought so this is the first generation 
iTech 6000 main BCA. Um, and these are the ones that are known to have problems. Now, this was on a festival last summer, and sure enough, it completely self-destructed after having been on for about an hour. I don't know why, I don't know if, uh, uh, what caused it, but something caused a short between the rails, and then it just blew a hole in the PCB. This is several layers here, and this is game over. So this has been that first generation, Crown kind of did several revisions on these amps, and in particular, this one I find quite interesting. This board, which I show here, was revised to this one. Now, if you've got a keen eye, you might notice straight away that the insulation gap between ground or rails or, or whatever is <laughs> significantly bigger. So if we go roughly, this is somewhere in this area is where the arc happened or maybe a, an ant crawled into it and got vaporized and then the board vaporized, I don't know. But we go back to exactly the same space and we find we have much bigger gaps on the PCB, which I'm guessing um, solve that problem of random explosions due to moisture or whatever it was that killed this amp. Um, this one's still dead, but this was one of the first ones I ever tried to repair, and with no information, it was a difficult job at the time. I have learnt a lot since. So this is probably repairable now. But yeah, welcome to the world of crazy crown amps. There we go, any questions, feel free to um, ask below. Um, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, feel free. Thanks very much.